Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support. Hello, and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky, Geeky Sparkles. It's hard to say sometimes. And you're only getting me today because poor Neon has either food poisoning or the stomach bug. Um, I'm hoping it's the first one because if it's the second one, we're all going to get it. And it's just me today. So sorry you have me for two days in a row, but it's the way it is. So we're going to do another Willow video because now here comes the media. They're all like, yay, it's not canceled, even though it pretty much is canceled. Um, because of what John Kasdan said on Twitter, where he had these big three page things talking about how it's not canceled, but it sounds just like it's canceled, you know, where the cast got let go so they can go find, you know, other employment where they have a script, but they don't know if they can even touch it for a year at least, but that's okay because other shows took 13 years to get a second season. Um, all these things, but it's, it's, it's not canceled. It's, it's not dead. It's just very badly burned. So, um, with that in mind, here come all the different media outlets trying to stand for this. And it, and I keep joking about one thing, and you'll see it when we go through here. And if you've watched our videos before, you're, you're going to catch on immediately. I'll mention it when we get to it, but one of these six reasons why Disney is was right to delay Willow Season 2, not cancel it, is just totally what I keep talking about. And then we're going to see the exact same theming in some of these um, reviews and things like that. You're going to see a pattern here. So... First off, we have this writer, Megan Hemingway, not to be confused with a Hemingway. Um, she's talking about the six reasons that Disney needs to make sure that they bring Willow back. They need to just postpone it. You know, make sure, take a break, but make sure you come back together. The first reason is, is because it was a success. I don't know by what standards they're going by, but according to, to Megan here, Willow was a success. Now, when they talk about why it's a success, they talk about different aggregators. According to several aggregators, including Just Watch and Whip Media TV Time. There are lots of aggregators out there. I'm sure depending on who you, you look at, you can find the numbers you want to go with. They don't give examples of numbers. They said Willow spent seven weeks in the top 10 most streamed series across one of these allegedly. Meanwhile, if you go look out here, you know, I wouldn't look, what were the numbers? Was it popular? Well, Disney Plus doesn't provide viewing data. Willow didn't break into the Nielsen top 10. So again, it depends on where you go because it sounds to me like Megan here went and found these really random ones that count specific things on a Friday at 7 p.m. to go with as her, oh, it was in the top 10. Seven weeks, according to one of these, but it's not even the top 10 at all, according to other ones. So, you know, that's a he said, she said type situation there but they talk about oh because it's, it's been so loved by the, the scores for the rotten tomatoes and things are fantastic because of the critical score well when the critics love it, it usually is indicative that most people are going to hate it uh average score is 83 percent for critical score but audience score is 66 percent so their argument for why it's 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 so popular, it's so loved, a couple of these um, streaming aggregators that I haven't even heard of said that it's fantastic. It was it was in the top ten all the time, and they also said that eighty three percent of critics loved it. So that means that you know, hot damn, it it is it is a good property, and they really need to bring it back. Um, that's their, that's their number six reason. Number five is because Willow fits the modern streaming nostalgia trend. You know the trend everybody's getting tired of, where they keep just regurgitating everything they own into new shows and new series and often ruining them when they do this because they're, they're just like a, a shell of their original self. A lot of times it's just like a brand new show with a coat of whatever IP paint on the show and they try to say, oh, it's for fans, but we don't actually want you as fans. We want new fans. And that's not what this is. It's nostalgia bait. So they're basically trying to argue that they should they should bring it in because of nostalgia bait. And that's what their, their their point for number five is. Bring it back because, you know, it's nostalgia bait. That's why you need to do it because audiences. You had that opportunity. You get one shot. You lost it. Now here's where here's where you're gonna see a trend, okay? Number four, because isn't it always this? Willow has good LGBTQ plus representation, right? Because 
it's not enough to be representative of a lot of people. They have a lot of diversity in this. There's a lot of like different races in this. Um, they, you know, we have people that are like Willow and his people are all shorter. So we have a lot of people that um, are uh, dwarfism and things like that, dwarfism as actors in the show. So there is quite a bit of diversity, but no, that's not enough diversity. It's about LGBTQ plus representation. And just so you know, like I always say with Hollywood, that basically just means women and lesbians because that's what this is about. Megan's happy because it has good representation for women's and lesbians, but what about representation, it, the fact that it's representative of a lot of other different groups. Okay, so you can just say it has a lot of good representation, but I love this. I love this too. A major detail of Willow that definitely kept fans invested was the addition of an LGBTQ plus romance, shippers. It is the shippers. This Megan is probably a shipper. Other Disney and Lucasfilm properties have included this, and but Willow is one of the first to totally ex be explicit about their queer characters. You know, because it's really sad that there's not enough representation. They talk about that here. The, this, the relationship is a sweet addition to the show, but more importantly, offers some much needed representation. What show doesn't have the representation in it now? Please tell me, because you keep acting like it's this, like they're, it's, they're so excluded and everything. But every time you turn around, they're shoving it into everything, uh, even when it doesn't fit. Like I have no problem with representation if it's organic. But right now, we know that's not the case here, because you keep running with it as a reason why... We're going to hide behind the lesbian and women's shield, you know? You keep seeing all these different shows and every one of them, it's like, oh, representation. Okay, light year, representation, lesbians. You know, I'm just, you keep seeing it. All these shows have representation. And when it gets representation, it's usually almost always lesbians. Let's be honest here. It's not like it's underrepresented at this point in time. But, that, but no, no, because, you know, they're, they're out right about it because the shippers love it. And canceling the series after one season would be having an immediate step back for representation because, you know, there's not enough of that out there, apparently. Um, then we get down here, number three. It works for both kids and adults. It depends how old the kid is. It depends how old your child is and what level you, ch you feel safe let your child watch. But, yeah, for the most part, like the original movie, I don't disagree with her on that point. Um, I, I could see that being it for all ages. I mean, that one I'll give her. Um, Willow perfectly expands on the original movie. Eh, mm, no. I mean, it, it expands off of the original movie, but that isn't necessarily a good thing. I mean, we want that, you need that base. I mean, uh, they didn't make the mistake of not tying it back to the original like some shows do, so I'll give them that. But are, there's a million ways they could have gone with it. This is one way of a lot, and it was probably not the best way to go. Um... And they're talking about how it's bringing new life, life into a new world, and it's different from other modern fantasy series, and it's faithfulness to the original. Yeah, but in the original, they weren't wearing, like, concert t-shirts and things like that, you know? And part of it, they, they couldn't get Mad Mart again. I understand that, you know, Val Kilmer couldn't do it because of, of, of health reasons. So that isn't completely on them. I think they would have done better how they got him back. But... Yeah, this one's you're, you're pushing it on this one here megan and then um number one is willow season two had the potential to be better even better it's gonna be better the awesomest of awesome because it has so much potential that they, they, they of course they can't cancel it even though that's basically what they did that you know maybe if they bring it back season two is going to be fantastic because well john said so he said he said that you know now that he's had time um, to say he, he, he's going to have more time to work on his story to make it better for when it comes around in two to 16 years. You know, he, this downtime, this break for him is good because it like, like Megan here says, it's going to be the better than ever. And, and, and if Willow has been canceled, this potential may never get a chance to follow through because we had characters that, that can really grow into themselves with plots and stories. Here's the thing. Any more streaming, especially streaming, you know, you only have at one season at most. I don't care who you are, you get one season. And most streamers cut stuff after one season. Heck, something else doesn't even make it the whole way for the first season. You try to give it a self-contained story in one season. If you're lucky, you get more. But you don't always get that. So, I mean... Plus, plus the show's creators could use fans, critics, and fans, critics, and opinions from Willow Season 1 to develop an even better series. Basically, listen to what the, the, the opinions are and then change everything about the show to match the opinions. 
Well, um, and I'm saying that because that's what most of the opinions are, is you need to change a lot of the show. So they don't want to listen to the fans and critics. Basically, when you say fans, you mean you. Listen to your opinions. Because anybody else, they're just, they're not really fans. They're just, they're just trolls. It's Star Wars all over again. Only ones that are actual fans are the ones who agree with the way it went. And um, back to the other point about representation. I want to go look at some of these reviews. So Rotten Tomatoes, we said we had 83% uh, for critics. So I'm like, okay, what are the critics saying? And you go out there and uh, here's the critics ones. It's filled with disproportionate contemporary sensibilities and inconsistent rules. And its Spotify 80s hits playlist only makes things worse. Ultimately, the heart of the original movie is missing. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, sustained interest, however, will be stymied by a cast of largely bland new characters and more pressing still, a dearth of sweeping excitement. We're talking about how it's a love letter to the 1988 film. Willow gives us the lesbian Disney princess we've been waiting for. They're right there. It gives you, I went out to the, to the audience reviews and I even went back a few days because I was like trying to see how, when the, when the interest started picking up again. And it's been pretty consistent, a few every day. Um, there's a lot of people like lazy scripts, lazy costume design. It would be better as an episode of the OC versus the medieval fantasy series. This person had more fun with it than the Rings of Power or House of the Dragon. Well, that's a low, that's not a very high bar. I mean, Rings of Power more so, I mean, is, is a low bar. Um, but then they're talking about here, lighthearted, easy to follow, authentic, diverse representation. And then you get, there's a bunch of this representation, representation. Um, some people like it and that's okay. You're allowed to like it. I mean, I didn't like it. I only got past two episodes. It might've got better. Uh, from my understanding, it didn't. Um, but some people liked it and that's fine. But it seems to me the general audiences overall are not happy with the show. And the 83%, I guess it's, that's not the worst it could be, but it's not glowing praise either from critics. It's just a eh show. It was a middling show and it didn't do well and it didn't perform to the numbers that Disney wanted it to, which is why it's getting shelved. They have to make cuts. They're cutting 5.5 billion from the company. There's already rumors out there that uh, Bob Iger wants lists of who to, to fire, well, lay off. I'm sorry, lay off. The who the people want to lay off, like their executives think they should be laid off for redundancies or whatever to save money by next month. I don't know if it's before the April 3rd investor call, but by April. So they need to make cuts. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to find as much as they can cut so they can focus on um, spending money where they know they're going to get a return. They're going to get subscribers and they get viewers that they can get ad, you know, ad spends, things like that. This wasn't one of them. If this was bringing it, this would not be shelved. They'd be like, oh, we're doing season two right now, hot damn. They're not, they're shelving it because it's not bringing it. And for the love of God, Hollywood, representation is, is more than just, I'm a lesbian. I'm sorry, I'm, I, I, it's no offense to anybody that's a lesbian. I, have, I, have, I am not, you know, in any way trying to throw shade at you. I'm just saying that Hollywood just keeps thinking that diversity just means either a, being somebody who's being a woman they gender swap somebody to being a woman or, oh, it's okay now because we belittled our male characters to make sure that there's a strong female character um, and only strong female characters, basically male characters with tits and, you know, and, and lesbians. That's what Hollywood keeps thinking of. We say strong women, it just means, I mean, I guess it's a compliment to, to you lesbians out there that Hollywood just, you know, automatically associates strong women with you. So, I mean, I mean, there's an upside, I guess, but I get tired of that's what representation means. Meanwhile, it was very representative of a lot of different types of people the whole way around. Um, but the only one you're hearing about is that one. And it's just, and it's predictable. It's just so predictable. And everybody's coming running to White Knight for Willow. And it's just hilarious to me because they're all just so predictable. Anyway, sorry this video is a little over the place. Um, I'm trying not to get sick and, uh, it's a little chaotic here today. So please like and subscribe. I forgot to do the whole like and subscribe spiel at the beginning. I think we're almost to 300,000. So if you could please make sure you're still subscribed, that'd be great. And we'll talk to you later.